Cluggage again. Out the back, Sorko off a step. He only needs one step. Dane Sorko. Yeah, what a talisman he is for the Brisbane Lions. Dane Zorko, who joins us live from Brisbane tonight on Footy Classified. Uh, Dane, first of all, mate, to, to you and the Brisbane Lions, thank you so much for making yourself available tonight. We really appreciate it, mate. Uh, how are you feeling? Yeah, thanks, Ed. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, feeling really good. Um, it's been a, a good couple of weeks um, on the training track. And I guess for us now, we'll, we'll tick off main training session tomorrow and then we'll get ready to go for Sunday afternoon. Dane, tell me about the last couple of years have been disappointing. Um, we've seen your coach under enormous pressure, particularly early on in the season. Um, I understand that you lost eight kilos coming into this year to get yourself in <laughs> as best position as you can be. First of all, how'd you do it? And I'm writing it down. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, it seems this year has been the culmination of a big build up for the Brisbane Lions. Yeah, definitely. I think over the past um, four years, we've taken a hell of a lot of learnings and experiences out of what we've been able to achieve. Um, although we've bowed out in finals in a couple of those years, we've certainly learned a lot. And I guess coming back to pre-season this year, we, we really needed to um, iron out a few kinks. And um, as a team, we didn't feel as though we, we could work fit enough or strong enough. And that's something that we tried extremely hard to get better at over the off-season. And the way the boys returned uh, in December was unbelievable. Uh, yeah, myself personally, losing eight kilos, a lot of that had to do with diet and being able to run again. I um, was fortunate enough to get my Achilles fixed over the pre-season, uh, in the off-season, and, and that certainly um, helped me significantly um, be able to run again and, and, and just train, which I haven't really been able to do for the past few years. So um, that's the, done the world of good for me, but the boys just returned in fantastic order, and I think that's set up the, the, the year for us. Dane, just extending that out a little bit further. So that's what you pinpointed. It was just uh, the physical nature of the game once you get to the pointy end, or is there something you guys have done with your forward structure or, or down back to maximise all that firepower you got in the front half? Yeah, well, I think offensively it's always been a, a really strong tool for us. I think, you know, we, we haven't really struggled kicking a score, but defensively we've been really poor, Jimmy. So in the off-season, uh, the pre-season especially, we worked extremely hard on getting our defensive actions right and really, really valued that this pre-season. And I think we've seen throughout the year, we've, we've conceded some scores, but we've also had a really good run of, um, you know, defending and the guys, in not only the back six led by Harris Andrews, but the ability for the midfielders and forwards to put pressure on and sort of turn that ball over higher up the ground um, has certainly allowed us to then go on and kick a score. But defensively, it's been a, a massive improvement for us. And we felt as though when we did our review at the end of last year, that was the area that we really needed to nail down on. And if we got fitter and stronger in that, in, in those um, all individually, uh, that would certainly help with that. And um, I think to date, we've, we've done a pretty good job. No doubt. You've gone from 12th to 6th in terms of your points against this year. A massive improvement. Uh, speaking of defenders, Jack Payne, he didn't train a couple of sessions ago. Uh, is he officially out of this game? No, he's not officially out. Um, you know, like a lot of our players, we've, we've managed them throughout the year. And um, given we had a couple of uh, weeks off, you know, it's not uncommon that players would go into moon boots or, um, you know, have a few days off just to try and get their bodies right, get the swelling down and um, but Pony, he had a bit of a sore ankle. He went in the moon boot, which is completely normal for us. Um, you know, he returned to training on Tuesday. He, he did a few things with the main group, um, and he'll obviously do a lot more tomorrow. So uh, we'll see how he pulls up after that. But yeah, certainly not ruled out yet. If he wasn't to play, could Gunston come in, or would it need a forward, a forward to come out for, for that to happen? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jack's played in every position, hasn't he? I mean, he's been such a versatile player for for Hawthorne over the years and we've we've seen this year he's been able to go down back for us at times as well so you know that's certainly um, a possibility for Faze. Darcy Gardner, Dara Joyce have all been fantastic in the reserves this, this year and every time those guys have come in they've done a fantastic job for us as well so if Jack wasn't av uh, um, was unavailable there's certainly players who can come in and, and do a job for, for the team and, and that's what will be required. Dane, game number 249 for yourself. Are you approaching it as though it is the most important game you've ever played? Oh, certainly, um, Damo, yeah. I mean, for a number of years now, we've gotten so close to obviously making it to that last Sunday in September and we've, we've fallen short. And 
Um, as Bag has rightly pointed out, I'm not getting any younger. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, there is extra importance on this game. There's no doubt about it. But um, look, we're coming up against a team that's in some red hot form. There's no doubt about that. I mean, their last you know 10 weeks have been phenomenal. Um, even that GWS game, they were well under man, but still put it right up to them. So um, we understand what you know what they possess and all their strengths. You know, their contest has been unbelievable, but. Um, we certainly have belief in our system as well that we can get the job done. Yep. And your role within the team, it annoys opposition supporters, but I know your teammates and your supporters love it. Uh, how worked up are you going to get? And is it just by way of you being naturally you that you uh, you do play this way? Yeah, I mean, I, I probably know I'm not number one favourite in a lot of supporter groups or a lot of teams, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, but I'm just a competitor. I just want to win, Damo. And, um, you know, early on in my career, I didn't see a lot of lot of winning at all. I mean, I, my first 100 games, I don't know what the strike rate was, but it wasn't great. So, um, you know, I was just sick and tired of losing. I, I'm a competitor. I want to go out there and win as much as I can. I think we all want to win. Um, at times, I can certainly go over the line. Um, there's no doubt about that. And um, certainly get held for my uh, actions and certainly take full accountability for that. Um, but it drives that fire inside me to get better and, and, and try and urge my team to win. So um, certainly wouldn't change the way I, I, I go about it. Certainly there's things and situations I could have handled a lot better, but um, it's just the, the fighter in me, I just I don't want to lose. Uh, Dane, I want to ask you about Joe Danaher. He's had his best year in quite some time up there. He's played forward, he's played ruck. He's such a, a unique talent and sometimes um, hard to work out what he's going to do. Have you guys figured out what he's going to do yet? Like, have you actually now fully adjusted to the full Joe Danaher experience? Oh, well, like you, we still don't know what we're going to get. Um, <laughs> we saw that a couple of weeks ago against St Kilda, didn't we? I mean, yeah. five metres out of the mist and uh, people didn't know about it. But, oh, look, what, what you're finding, Joe, now is just a really consistent performer. We know what we're going to get from him every time he, he takes the field. And I think that's a real strength for us now. Um, yeah, OK, he might miss goals, but what he provides us, and not only kicking goals, but his ability to be a second ruckman for Oscar, um, he creates a really solid contest. You know, I know he's caught flack in the past for, you know, getting pushed out of the contest too easily. He's really solid in that department now. Um, he just does so many team things for us that we know we're going to get from him every week. And I think he's built his game around that. And from that, goals and opportunities to score have come on. And he's certainly taken those in that first final a couple of weeks ago. He was just outstanding. Um, he was taking big marks and kicking really important goals. So, um, you know, he's, he's such a competitor as well. He also doesn't want to lose. And... Um, I think for us as, as his teammates, we just know what we're going to get now, which is really important. Um, tell us about Chris Fagan this year. Um, yeah, Lee Matthews talks about him on the media, how they have dinner together. Greg Swan's been a great support through what has been at times an horrific year for Chris Fagan. He, he seems, though, to have been able to work it through, but he also told me that he received great support from the playing group. Uh, what does this mean to him and what, is the, what does it mean to the players to, to perform for Chris Fagan on uh, Saturday night? Yeah, well, I mean, it is, honestly, he's like a second father to all of us. I mean, his caring um, nature uh, um, and really wanting to, for us to be the best individuals possible, not just the best footballer, um, is quite remarkable. I mean, there's so many stories of him going out of his way to make sure players are all right and he'll go and see them and do so many different things. Um, there's no doubt the last 12 months has been extremely difficult for him. But what he's done every day is he's come in, put a really great face on and, and put that aside and, and got to coaching us and um, still caring about us. And, I mean, oh, oh, it would just be extraordinary, um, just the pressure and, and everything that he would have yeah. been under the last 12 months. But the way he's been able to handle it has been unbelievable and um, it makes us want to you know, go on even further in September and, and get the job done for him. Quickly, what's the diet? <laughs> uh, cut out junk food, Ed, and uh, if you can get runny, do it. <laughs> right, oh, well, no need a two ain't bad. No. <laughs> You're still allowed to have a wine or two occasionally? Or <laughs> Go for it. Good Go on for it. Hey, Dane, again, mate, we really appreciate you taking the time to come on here. Um, I remember the uh, grand final footy show. Uh, you are involved in that uh, back uh, in the last one we ever did. You're a great uh, contributor to uh, the the, uh, the fabric of footy, and it's great to see the excitement you bring to your team. We wish you all the very best for the preliminary final, mate, and hopefully speak to you next week. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Good on you, mate. Dane Zorko.
champion of the Brisbane Lions Football Club, and he has been a great personality. Rubs people up the wrong way, but nothing wrong with that. Five no. best and fairest. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Is that all? Amazing record. Just five. Yeah. Five best and fairest.